Also known as JQ, and his masterpiece that I worked on at the Eyes Collaboration Show. Eyes is an underground graffiti artist, and he had a collaboration show where all artists from different avenues of the city and states come over and show their style. So it was more of a signature type of show. Everybody had to have their own flow and represent it and uh, respect it. So. It was a very healing environment. I came in with my uh, materials and I was ready to execute. I didn't know what I was gonna do. I just knew I was ready to do what I had to do. Uh, so as time progressed, I looked at all of the works of art first. That was part of the process of the creativity. I had to observe the theme. I had to see what others were doing that I was not doing. So I had to compare and contrast and um, count my move. And when I went around the whole room, it was a lot of beautiful works, but no one had anything that dealt with history. So Memphis is history, it's historical land, it's life, you know what I mean? So Memphis is Egypt, why not have a pharaoh? And I made a pharaoh. But this time I did a pharaoh with eyes, eye. He signifies the third eye. That is why it is a humongous eye. It's almost like a moon. I worked on this and I liked it. I really liked how the pharaoh came out. I wasn't expecting him to uh, become like this, but it came out perfectly. The mahogany background, uh, maroon, that's like a reflection of emotion. Most of these colors are off of emotion. It's not just being creative, it's more of telling my story, speaking of whatever I'm feeling at that current. I felt like life, that's why it reminds me of flesh. These are flesh tones. Uh, the name of this portrait is called Iro, get it? It's like Pharaoh, but without the fair, it's Iro. I mean, so I like that. This is dope. This is an amazing one of one collection. Art has no structure, art has no limits, but most importantly, art has no race or ethnicity. This documentary will take you on a journey of African-American artists that will allow you to see the significant difference of representation of African-Americans within art compared to my generations back in the day. I think there's a lot of people that are, that are, that are neglected in, in, in art. I don't know if, because it's, if it's who made the paintings or what, but um... I don't know. It's, I don't know. Black people are never really portrayed realistically, and not, not, not or not even portrayed. I mean, not even portrayed in modern art enough.
like Ernie Barnes, who was uh, uh, in, in the you know Good Times movie, and, and Image was positive, and and for the first time, kids were growing up with an image that were black. A lot of artists of color used to come and ask me, how can I do this? You know, we never see anybody like you at these shows and stuff. I was traveling, I call it now in hindsight, the Jitland circuit for artists. Oh, they'll never come to this. And that's the attitude that they had. Hope you're enjoying the ride. When we come back from a short break, we'll cruise down the trails of the talented Memphis African-American art scene. Now more than ever, we are confronted with the fragility of life and our connection to nature and our planet. Nature is showing us that humankind is on the verge of a breakdown. One million plant and animal species are likely to disappear soon. We rely on nature for our energy, for our food, and everything we need. We can fix this, but only if we act now. It's time to ensure we have a future. It's time for nature. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. This World Environment Day. This World Environment Day. Held a worldwide time for nature. We will not bag down until we see real and lasting change to support this beautiful planet we call home. So tag your friends and leaders of corporations, companies, and governments to invite them to be part of the solution. We need the planet more than the planet needs us. Your planet, my planet. It's time for nature. La hora de la naturaleza. Before the break, we took a journey down memory lane, getting insight to what African-American artist representation used to look like. During this segment, you will be taken on a journey with African-American artists within Memphis and how society has had an impact on black representation significantly. My name is Andre Miller. I'm a professional artist. and My art represents the story of my people. I express myself in my art many different ways. Um, having uh, been a person who's, who's always struggled to be heard, I would find different ways to express myself creatively. I would um, dive into poetry, I would dive into music, and I would also uh, dive into something that was uh, God-given, which is our ability to draw um, very well and draw what I see. I was introduced to the uh, fine art of painting from a uh, uh, junior high school teacher by the name of Boo Ruck. Uh, she was my junior high art teacher uh, at Melrose Junior High and uh, she opened us up to a world of experiences. She taught me everything that I needed to know going forward. Everybody else only built upon what she taught me uh, and I, I, give, I give big ups to her. Um, prior to her, my first, I guess my first art teacher was Richard Wyatt Jr., uh, first cousin, who was a prominent artist in, in the LA area and he does murals and uh, a plethora of things but uh, Miss, Miss Ruck uh, opened me up to painting Pyre, sculpting, and many other um, ways of expressing uh, My name is Victoria Jones, and I'm the executive director of Tone. And um, we are a black art engine. I'm still trying to find the word that describes what we are, um, but really a group of young black creatives that have dedicated their time and energy to building out platforms for black artists in the city. Um, and really thinking of black folks as storytellers and however we're telling stories, whether that be through music, painting, dance, performance, poetry, photography, like however black folks are showing up and telling their stories, really Tone is trying to act as a container to hold those stories, lift them up, amplify them. Um, and so that is what we do. We have been doing this work for about eight years now. Um, we started as like this very nomadic art collective. Uh, we were literally called The Collective when we first started this work. Um, just doing little pop-ups anywhere we could. So museums, galleries, um, <laughs> honestly, like most of the time they would be in white spaces. So we were visiting and borrowing space. And at some point that uh, 
we knew that we had kind of capped where we could grow as long as we were borrowing space from white folks. And so um, we'd had a number of unfortunate, but um, normalized, I guess, in a weird way, experiences in these spaces where security is asking us what we're doing there. Or one place we went, <clears throat> One of the older white patrons had handed their dirty dishes to one of the artists that we had invited to the space, assuming that they were on kitchen staff. So we've just had the gamut of experiences um, in these white spaces being reminded that this was not our home. This was not a space created for us. And so um, it became super, super, not just fun to think about or imagine, but necessary for the longevity of our work to build out a home base, a physical space. And so that's where we landed here, Tone HQ. Um, and we've been here since 2019, um, opened up January 11th of 2019 to a crowd of like 1,700 people. Um, I mean, it was wall to wall in here, like, and the entire shopping center parking lot was taken over. It was really beautiful. We had one of our elders from the neighborhood come up and with tears in her eyes telling us like, she hadn't seen the parking lot look like this since the 70s. And so to be able to activate a space that is of our people, um, and then like, I mean, that's just selling the, selling it short. Orange Mound is not just of our people, but created by our people. First neighborhood in the nation created, not just for black people, but by black people. And I know we got some other folks in the running, but when I mean, like we think about a Treme or other neighborhoods, like those were mixed neighborhoods. Like they might not have been white folk, a lot of white folks there, but they were mixed neighborhoods. This neighborhood was created for black people, by black people, black folks here, fresh out of, uh, and slavery are building the homes, the streets, the schools, the community, like they built this neighborhood. And so to be able to exist in that legacy, as we're talking about holding space for black stories, um, we could think of no better place to do it. From the exhibitions we have, to the artist talks, to the concerts, film screenings, like we're getting to witness black folks telling stories and really beautiful, really authentic ways because they've got the freedom to just experiment in their expression. So my name is Barnett Jordan. I go by the artist name of Matt. When it comes to being a black artist, there a lot of people see a lot of cons, but it's pros and cons, especially in this new age of everyone has been more inclusive. And now it's the time to be a black artist. Being black and being an artist is hard. <laughs> it is hard. There's a lot of People, you have to bypass the who's who and oh, do I like you or not? Do I know you? Are you the friend of whoever? And it tends to be of the, the wider, you know, group of people. So it's hard to jump in there and be respected. They will love your art. You'll go places, they'll be like, your art is amazing. It's so different. It's, it's so, it's, what's the word for it? Not, <laughs> it's, it's so uh, cultured <laughs> and it's almost like a backhanded, compliment as if you're great for a black artist like no i'm a great artist so. see i want you to think about a song a movie or a photo that has impacted your life and as you think about it i'm sure your eyes got a little bright i'm sure you cracked a smile so slight as you think back to how that piece of art made you react did it help you through a tough time did it inspire you to be great did it help mend a broken heart or did it help you relate to the feeling that the artist was trying to relay, just think about it. A wedding with no photos, no memories to relive, no movie for a mother to enjoy with her kids, no music to get you through a long day or a road trip. See, a world with no art is a world we don't want to live. Because whether you know it or not, you've been affected by stories and plots, by rhythms and rhymes, you reminisced on good times, and with photos that capture memories, these arts have become a heartbeat. A heartbeat to our culture, something we all know we need. A heartbeat that if we were to stop, would leave the world incomplete. See, at FOCO, we create that beat. We create that scene. We create those photographic memories. We create the next generation of art things that will make the mundane seem so sweet. So as I bring this to a close, think about that piece of art and why it's your favorite. Now imagine that it didn't exist because the artist didn't have the money to make it. Black representation in art is important and has increased tremendously, but most importantly, should never be forgotten. I'm going to test this out real quick on you. Now keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my s***.